What's up everybody, welcome back to another video, Drop Gems here with another gem. Yes, I hope you're going to fall in love with me and I'm going to be your dream person. No, I am going to be your dream alien, your nightmare, because look at this movie, it's Alien 3. 1992 is Alien 3. Now, I don't know if there's going to be an awesome movie rant or uh, a massive rant. I'm just going to do this shit right freestyle off the head, give my thoughts, spoilers ahead, and then go through the plot. So this is supposedly the worst Alien movie in the franchise, you know, according to uh, Alien, <laughs> according to Sigourney Weaver, no, according to whoever, and, you know, uh, I, I don't blame him for that, but let's check this out real quick. So you got a director here in David Fincher, David Fincher, of course, very successful director, many, many movies, many great movies, uh, visual movies, guys, visual, visual, visual all about that um and in this movie do we get visual no we get shit we get shitty cgi fake ass aliens uh this movie lets us down just like if you please check my aliens rant out uh on 1986's aliens james cameron's um you know you go to three here and that's what you do you produce shitty aliens now you give us the aliens you give us some kind of aliens in this environment this prison this futuristic prison that is just men, strictly made of men, and it's a futuristic prison. The environment that Mr. Fincher creates here uh, is perfect for an alien to succeed and thrive and, you know, uh, and really just be scary. So at times it's scary, like that scene where she's, she's trapped in this corridor and the alien's chasing her, and, and they're chasing, the aliens are chasing people through the catacombs. It's very, very uh, claustrophobic. And it pays off at times. If they did the aliens better and they did these scenes a little bit better, paid more care to these scenes, uh, and really cared about this action here that was happening, and cared about the aliens and how they used them and really uh, respected it, I guess, they, they would, they would, it would have been decent. But, of course, those scenes are just, you know, POV shots of, of camera shots very cheaply made, and, and the aliens are, are, you barely see them, or they're CGI. So... Uh, Mao, man, um, you get this scene here with Sigourney Weaver, though, with the alien right in her face, and, and that's something we've probably waited two home movies to see. Um, we get to see it back in 92, and finally the alien is face-to-face -face with Sigourney Weaver here. What a fucking picture, right? Mm-hmm. That was a cool scene, uh, right after the alien murks this guy out of nowhere. Good, great fucking setup uh, by Fincher. Uh, didn't see that kill coming, and that was just a superb kill, and it got me. And then you see that close-up. So th that scene there, I mean, give that credit. I mean, you know, where is that talked about? Never talked about. Because the movie's forgotten. Like I said, th these moments, no one forgets the, the little assist or the blocks or the, the bounce pass in the game. They just remember who won it. So that's the bottom line. This movie didn't win it. And it just loses. But I, I do I do like it. Like I said, there's there's points in this movie and I go through the plot and I will tell you what I like and I'm honest about. Like I said, the environment does it. The cinematography does it. It's there. Uh, it puts me there in that atmosphere, so give, give them that. But am I scared? Yeah, at times I'm a little scared, but they just drop the ball, you know, with the scaredness. They could be more scary, um, but they just drop the ball when you do see these aliens and, and some of the scenes here. The actors are great. I got to give it to the actors. Uh, fucking wonderful. And you put Sigourney Weaver uh, in this in this environment here. She does good, man. I, I like her, like, um, uncertainty, you know? So it's very, very well played with that area. Um, but, of course, you know, I'm not going to go into the history of the problems with this movie with David Fincher and him getting cut from the project or leaving the project in the middle of shooting this movie and someone else coming in to direct and put together this movie, editing-wise and, and whatever. I'm not going to get into it. Um, what I'm going to fucking say, just leave it, leave it to Fincher. I'm going to give the credit to Fincher. Fuck it. And um, let's just go into the plot. So that's my thoughts. Uh, let's go into this plot and wrap this fucking thing up, this rant. I don't even still know what it's going to call it. Let's go. So, basically... Uh, you, you follow from number two, so you follow uh, Ripley here, Miss Sigourney Weaver. She's found in her little escape pod, see? And she's found with Hicks and Newt. They're found. And what happens is uh, Newt and Hicks are dead. Uh, they didn't survive the crash or what have you. Well, I'm not going to get into the details. They're dead. It's basically it. There's nothing to discuss. Um, and Weaver's found alive. So they bring Weaver back. She's actually crash landed on a planet here where there's it's just a, a prison colony for men. So it's a futuristic prison colony for men at this time. What a place to fucking land, right? At every place. She's got some bad luck going. So anyway, she, she lands. 
and she wakes up and this this guy man he's like he's a murderer or whatever but he's nice like he's a murderer he's a doctor but he's nice you know like it, he's such a good character i think it's charles dance here that plays him but anyways what a fucking legend man great great fucking acting this guy plays a killer but a nice guy Can you, how do you do that so he balances it very well so let's get into it so weaver here wakes up and she's like where the am i he fills her in on where she is but she feels something wrong. She feels something in her body. Uh, something's not right in there. And she, I, she immediately knows that she might have an alien in her. So she's telling this guy, trying to tell him what, what, what she brought back or what was in the, you know, trying to ask him what happened to her people, blah, blah, blah. He fills her in. So the head warden comes in. He's like, you know, you got to shave your head and shit. You're, this is where you're at. You know, my homies don't see other people like you, uh, you know, at all. So if the, you need to blend in and look like them. So that they don't think anything or get anything motivated. So, really cool. I mean, you know, it brings a different dynamic to the movie, you know. So, she's got to avoid not just these aliens, but these guys, these men, these humans. So, she's Ripley here. You're really feeling for her, man. So, great directing, great writing a little, a little. And, anyways, let's move on. So, Ripley, you know, does what, it's, what the guys, they say, um... You know they're not they're not really believing her what she's saying about the aliens. They they go back to look at the ship a little closer then to see what she's talking about. And um, I believe they find nothing. I believe so. I, I don't fucking know. Anyways, they come back and they say, Ah, fuck you, stupid crazy. Anyway, she's a crazy chick. So they're all telling her she's crazy. In the meantime, there's a couple of these prisoners that are out and about doing their daily activities, so to speak, and and they are attacked and killed by the alien. Uh, you know, so no, they don't come back. So, anyways, uh, I don't know how they don't notice for a while for some fucking reason. I mean, it's a prison, you know? You would be counting heads all the time. But that's okay. Who gives a shit? This prison's relaxed in the future. Uh, anyways, so, uh, they, so Weaver eventually here is ha she's talking to the guy I mentioned, this nice killer guy. And he is fucking done. He gets his chest just spewn open by a fucking alien. It is beautiful. It comes out of nowhere. You don't see, you see the shadow of the alien behind him and you see her face. It's fucking great. Like, how could you not say that scene is great? It's a memorable scene. It's something that I remember out of, you know, compare, I'm not going to pair this movie to other aliens. I'm, I was, let it sit by its own. That scene alone uh, is, is just, what? So he's fucking dead. And the alien comes up to her face to face, as you see here, and it does not kill her, does not attack her, just sniffs her a little bit uh, and, and leaves. Because he, I guess he, he smells the alien in her, hence that protects her for, for the meantime. You know, it's one of his own. It's one of their own. So she, he leaves the alien. The fuck, she leaves. And Weaver gets the fuck out of there. She runs to the, everybody else that's left in the kitchen area. And she tells them what happened. They don't believe, the warden stands up and doesn't believe her. And at this moment, and not, the alien or whatever comes out and fucking kills him. And lifts him up in the air, I don't know, about 10 feet in the air, uh, by the tail, drew him uh, through his abdomen or something, lifts him up, takes him into the vent, back to the hive or what have you, uh, for processing, but yo, that's another kill out of nowhere, oh, fuck, and, you know, the prisoners are shocked just like you are, and Weaver, you know, it's time, you know, they get the fuck out of there, I don't know where they go, because where is there to go, but they go, and she's asking them, where's the weapons? You got any weapons? And they don't have any weapons because, of course, it's a prison. You know what I'm saying? They're prisoners. They don't have shit with their dicks. So whatever. It's it's a bad situation here. Um, and basically now they have to come up with a plan. So you meet Char Charles Dutton, of course, is in this, man. Um, yeah, classic actor, character actor. We love him, of course, from Nick of Time and other uh, Secret Window and um, other movies. And he's in this. He plays a great character. He really he, he feels for Ripley. He wants to help Ripley. Um, of course, he wants to like help Ripley with the alien side of her end this whole thing. He knows the gravity of the situation. If these aliens get loose, this could be the end of worlds, the end of planets, the species taking over, uh, unsurvivable. So anyways, they set up a plan to trap the alien in the catacombs and burn him to death. Well, of course, these prisoners are not ready for what uh, this species is. They are just human. This thing's a fucking alien. So guess what? Some of these prisoners die, and in doing that... They, they don't, their plan does not succeed, uh, so Ripley's the, one of the last ones left, and she, she leads this alien into a corridor with Mr. Charles Dutton here, and Mr. Dutton sacrifices himself, now this is a cool scene, 
he sacrifices himself one on one with the alien which is his bare fucking hands and he goes lets the you know basically the alien is is like scratching him biting him uh, while he's trying to fend it off, he's yelling to Ripley to run, or, or no, not to run, excuse me, hit the lever so the, the lava comes down and kills them both. And, you know, man, it, it, it's a good scene, you know? Like, they, they zoom in a little bit so you can see the franticness, see see franticness of, of Mr. Dutton and the franticness of this alien. And the way the alien moves and slices at him and bites at him and claws at him, it's quick. Like, it's weird because Mr. Dutton is moving at, at his normal speed but the alien is moving at a super speed, so it's really uh, a good effect by Mr. Fincher. Uh, credit to Mr. Fincher, man. Fuck you. So anyways, the end of the movie's coming. Yeah, so she does that. She pulls the lever. Boom, lava comes on them both. But this alien, see, jumps out or what have you. It jumps out of the lava. If I have no homie to it, jumps out of the fucking lava, grabs her leg or some shit. But there's one homie left. I didn't mention him. This is There's one psycho uh, prisoner left, but he's a cool dude. He's a good guy. Uh, he's a good boy, and he um, helps Ripley out. Um, Ripley's able to free herself from the alien. The alien falls, or what have you, is dead, and she's able to be lifted up by Mr. Homie over here that was left. Um, and Mr. Uh, so, and at the end, of course, Wayland Industries shows up, blah, 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 the fucking android bishop, and wants to, you know, take the alien out of Ripley uh, for further research and development. But Ripley says, fuck that. She's like, I had enough of this shit. So she just takes a head swan dive off the off a, a pedestal or whatever you want to fucking call it basically pirate ships it you know bails right into the lava to and, and as soon as she's going down you know this corny i may even talk about it obviously it's corny it's z jack corny this I mean, that's what i was talking about this whole time but you know the the shit comes out of her at the end and she's able to kill the alien and all that and that's the end of movie uh, roll credits so that is the wrap-up of alien 3 thanks guys for listening to this fucking rant